from sort of the 1740s onwards, pineapples were the craze of the time, mainly because they were so expensive to grow, so difficult to grow. Because of that, they became a real status symbol. For example, they'd have one garden boy to look after the pineapple pit full time. He'd be paid 18 pence a week, um, but to tend the pineapples 52 weeks a year, so putting on more manure, checking the temperature, making sure that the pineapple pit didn't burst into flames, because that was actually a really common problem. To grow just one pineapple would have cost the equivalent of £5,000 today. So expensive were they that actually often people didn't even eat the pineapple. It was presented at dinner, put on the centre of the table for all the dinner guests to admire. Then they pass it around from dinner party to dinner party, really until it started to rot. <laughs> Lawrence's father was incredibly unusual that he, he actually set up home with Sarah, the, the family governess. That was not just an unusual thing to do, but an incredibly brave thing to do, because no one did it. It was practically unheard of um, in terms of crossing so many social barriers, moral barriers, legal barriers. Um, it, it, it was very, very brave. Master-servant relationships were, of course, not common. I mean, it, it's jolly difficult to know exactly how common because most people don't, don't leave records of this kind of thing. But I think it is important to distinguish between relationships between a master and, say, a scullery maid and, and the kind of relationship that, that Lawrence's parents had, which was between a master and the family governess, who was highly educated, who, you know, would have sat at the dinner table with the rest of the family, who really played a, a central role within, within the day-to-day -day running of the household. I mean, remember, this is the... 1880s, it's the height of the Victorian age, where Victoria is held up as the epitome of the ideal family, with all her children running around, um, her having been faithful to one man for her whole life. For Lawrence to, to be born into a family that was diametrically opposite to that in, in every way, really, w w was quite a burden to bear for the rest of his life. <laughs> Bronte sisters play such a central role, I think, in, in the British literary culture. I mean, some of the characters they created, Jane Eyre, Heathcliff, these are characters that are so familiar to us. Yet somehow it's, it's only coming here that you really get an understanding of the influences that they brought to bear on their work. <laughs> So instead, Henry decided he wanted to marry someone else, Anne Boleyn. The thing was, the church didn't allow divorce, not even for a king. But Henry wasn't going to let that stop him, oh no. So he decided instead to embark on a plan that was to be one of the most radical religious reforms this country had ever seen. That was it for him. On 28th of January, 1547, Henry died. Even though he had been quite mean to people, his death was actually marked by a massive public outpouring of grief. Henry was survived by his three children, Edward, Mary and Elizabeth, all of whom went on to become king or queen at some point or another.